Hey, how you doing? Welcome back. Today, as promised in my last video, I'm going to discuss some of the ways that you can make money using real estate as an investor with little to no cash. I know it's hard to believe. Oh yeah, don't we need 25% down? Isn't a commercial loan 25% down? Dave Ramsey told me you have to have 25% or even more to invest in real estate, even buying your house. So what's the trick? Well, there's no trick. The trick is that there are just different avenues open up for you to invest in real estate. You have to be more creative than usual, but those ways exist. So here we're gonna talk about them. Number one is referred by different names, but it's called house hacking. What does house hacking means? House hacking is the oldest investment trick in the book which is remember when you bought your house and maybe you thought that hey i want to rent out another room to someone make some extra cash flow so i can pay my mortgage well house hacking is essentially an extended version of that the way it works is that simply um, you invest in a property that you want to live in as well by making that your primary residence you get benefits of putting only three to five percent down or being qualified for fha loan so you have to you don't have to put a lot of money down this way it's your domicile it's your house especially in the state of florida you even get property tax decreases through save our home if it's your homestead and uh, with that it removes that huge barrier to invest in real estate because you're not really investing in real estate you're investing in a hybrid it's your living place but it's also a place you can get cash flow from so how does that work you go and look for multifamily properties could be a duplex could be a triplex could be a fourplex if you're lucky and you buy it you buy it as your primary residence you purchase it obviously if there's vacancy you want to address it if there's not you already have tenants paying rent for it and then you take possession of that and that's it you live in one unit you rent the other you probably heard that before um you can you can you have to declare them as a rental income but you collect those rents you pay your mortgage off sometimes you get to live for free how cool is that I want to live for free i don't have to pay mortgage i don't have to pay rent this way it helps you build equity without paying anything per month obviously you can save that money that you would have otherwise paid for mortgage per month and use it to invest in other properties isn't that cool it's easy the way it starts is uh, the same as if you want to buy a house so if you're in the market to buy a house for you and your family you want to also think about multi-family properties as well doesn't hurt to go look at duplexes triplexes in your area you want to stay for units are low because that's residential five or more is always commercial even though it's residential so you don't get those benefits with with fha loans or three percent or five percent down uh, so be careful about that and then if you have a multi-family property that you like you can purchase that instead of a single family this way it has a higher capitalization meaning you have other units that you can earn income from and you build equity you get to live for free eventually and uh, that'll be a really good starter for you here are some considerations there are some positives there's some negatives so the positive is that obviously instead of buying a single family home that you just pay the mortgage from you may build equity prices can fluctuate you actually have your home plus investment vehicle all in one it's a really good bundle for you um, but the negative side of that is that just there are some things that you have to look for for example multi-family prices are high especially now in this market the prices are really up another issue that you might have is that with multi-family especially duplexes the living space is very small because a lot of architecture especially here in florida the way you see it is that they take a land that is uh, the measures are sort of for a single family home maybe a four bedroom and they create a duplex out of it so chances are a unit that you want to live in is not going to be as big as spacious or as nicely designed as if you were to buy a single family home so be careful about that it's not always the case you could find duplicates that are amazing i'm from new york state and uh, new york they've been just amazing amazing multi-family units very expensive but they're very nice also this really works if you're a young professional you have a really good job good paying job that you want to invest in real estate you don't mind compromising on some square footage or number of bedrooms i think it's a little bit harder once you have a family you have kids and you need a certain square footage you need a certain number of bathrooms or bedrooms so uh, just be mindful of that when you're going into uh, multi-family properties understand that you're dealing with a smaller space but that's there's a lot of financial gain for that next one is partnerships or creating investors um, I actually did that once um, there are different ways to go about it but if you have a certain amount of capital you can work with someone else but maybe there's a friend there's a business partner or some family someone that you trust and you can pitch that to them and say hey you know if you have some capital do you want to invest in real estate with me 
we can go into it ourselves you put a certain amount of capital into it i put a certain amount of capital into it and i'll put the work into it i become the managing partner make sure everything is done property management is done financials are done so you're just going to be a silent partner and just you can just look at the property look at the investment to see how it's doing and uh, you don't have to do any work and maybe our return could be higher than the uh, stock market or any other investment vehicles that you have in this case always there has to be a value proposition the way it worked for me is that i had an investor and i pitched it to them that hey i'm a finance expert i know real estate just give me some money i'll bring in some money but it's money from you work from me i'll manage the property i'll grow it and we'll uh share profits in a, in a, in a system that's called waterfall um i don't want to explain it too much here because uh, it's just a system that you say if a pro you know, on a sale of property that's a property that you buy and then renovate and then sell down the line which is an exit strategy and say you will get the profits up to a certain percentage and after that certain percentage i'll get the rest of the profit if there's more profit so it incentivizes me to work harder or when the sale of the property comes for the property to make past a certain amount of money so i can give the let's say a 10 percent uh, of the profits to the investor and then i'll collect the rest again waterfall is just a very classic one it's just one that is used in commercial pro properties a lot there are a lot more that you can use you can just do profit sharing simple profit sharing hey let's go into it let's put some money in we'll share profits 50 50 after that so positives and negatives positive is that now you have enough capital to invest in real estate you don't want to live in a place that's a duplex or a multifamily, or you can't even find it so southwest florida for example there are not a lot of options like that it's all single family so what are you going to do well in this case you can have additional capital coming in hopefully you get to have enough to put a down payment in for a property now the bads the bad is the partnerships partnerships partners are people people have different opinions egos so you have to be careful that when you go into business with someone especially in this matter when they provide the capital you're very transparent you understand your strategy you did your math and they're okay with a potential loss and disagreements that's big personally i've been through partnerships that are disagreements and that can really be bad for you so be careful who you go into business with make sure that the expectations are set your social contract with them and then you go into business with some good faith but also contingency plans and i don't need to explain to you that obviously always have a lawyer in bring him in have them write a contract with you a partnership contract an attorney writing a partnership contract protects both of you creates an llc or s corporation depending on the size of your holding and then you get it to go into business without much anxiety without much fear that okay what happens if there's a disagreement what ha happens if there's a default it's all legally laid out so talk to an attorney and make sure you go into this with legal advice last one i want to discuss on this video is hard money lending or private lending well, investing in real estate is expensive. We know that um, you have to put in 25% and sometimes 25% is expensive. Imagine if you want to buy a property that's $1 million. Where are you going to get a quarter of a million dollars? If you have that much cash, well, good on you. I'm, I'm so happy for you. But unfortunately, most of us don't. I don't have it. Um, so how do you invest in real estate? Well, I mean, do you have to wait to save that much money? Well, no. If you have an appetite for a higher amount of debt, maybe a higher amount of risk and higher loan to value ratio, there are always hard money lenders and private lenders. Let me explain. So hard money lender or private lenders are the folks who say, well, you get a traditional mortgage from a company, whether it's a commercial loan or a uh, residential loan for investment, we'll finance the closing cost and the down payment for you. Or some of them say, well, we cover the closing cost. You can finance the closing cost through us. We'll pay a portion of the down payment. So for example, instead of 25%, you pay 10% and that'll just soften the blow. You don't have to save as much and um, this way you get to acquire this property without waiting years to save up that money it's very simple different hard money lenders or private lenders have different offerings um, i've seen different ones curated to investors for example i've seen fix and flip loans which says that the loan doesn't get amortized you don't have to repay it during your renovation and when you renovate and sell the property you have to pay us back in one balloon payment balloon payment is just a loan that you have to pay the whole amount or the remaining amount at this certain date and that's it so this way it makes it easier on you if especially if you want to uh, flip a property you don't have to worry about paying the mortgage in addition to all the renovation costs sometimes they even uh, give you credit for the renovation costs too so that makes it very easier you just have to do the work so now off to pros and cons pros well it makes it easier to invest in real estate 
it makes it much easier i personally worked on a project with private equity that was um, financed by a private lender attorney wrote up the contract you get the money you invest in real estate you have to make the payments it's just like the mortgage company at least from your perspective and it didn't have any issue for that so it makes it easier for you to invest in real estate especially if you're interested in flips there are actually uh, offerings curated to that take advantage of that you can just look up hard money lenders in your city in your area have a discussion with them see how it works for them but uh, it's a good avenue for you if you don't have a lot of cash uh, to invest in real estate now on to the negative <laughs> negative is depends on your risk appetite really it's a little dangerous because now your loan to value ratio is going up imagine if you have a loan to value ratio of 95 percent for your property and then as interest incurs not only the tenants don't pay their rent and they default and then you're in the risk of losing the property but the problem is that the amount you owe surpassing the value of the property, especially if the market right now, it's very hot, it's at height of its uh, prices. So if it goes down a little bit, if it adjusts a little bit, you might be in trouble with it. So make sure that you choose a property that you truly believe that is going to give you steady cash flow for a long time because it's very important you can't afford a default or it's going to be really hard on your financial you might lose the property and owe some on top of it so understand some of the values we discussed it and we'll discuss it for you don't worry uh check out other videos we discuss cap rate we'll discuss cash on cash loan to value ratio things like that so make sure that you did the numbers you did the due diligence and you're ready to have a property that gives you cash flow so you don't have to think about default or any other bad scenarios because um, your loan to value ratio is higher than average that increases the risk and also makes it harder for you to build equity just be aware of that but if you're a cash flow investor you don't care all you care about is that positive cash flow so hopefully if you pay all your expenses pay your mortgage you still have cash flow and uh, helps you achieve your financial goals well there are more ways to make money and invest in real estate if you have little to no money it's fine we'll go through them later these are the my top three my favorite ones that i started these are very well battle tested they've been going on for a long time a lot of folks including myself i was in, very interested in commercial property but investing in commercial property is really hard so using partnerships using uh, private lenders i've seen and i was able to invest in real estate so uh, you want to explore those options obviously you want to talk to the experts have a team of experts around you if you have a good real estate agent if you have a good lending partner if you have a good uh, loan officer they can or if you have a good finance manager or an accountant they can all help you make a better decision remember the video where we talked about real estate as a business if you're investing in real estate you're a business owner act like one understand the finances of it understand the operations of it understand the market research of it get comfortable get comfortable with these phrases you don't have to buy a course you don't have to do anything crazy it's very simple there are videos out there you don't have to watch mine there are a lot of good videos out there discussing strategy how to get into real estate i discuss some of the specifics how to's and the finance learn keep learning keep studying keep getting comfortable with these concepts and keep checking out zillow <laughs> keep checking out with your local realtor get some listings learn about the prices and see where you want to be in the next five years financially and if there's a property that you like that you think you can afford that the numbers make sense hey go for it first step ever and you'll do it you manage the property you feel very comfortable and you're like wow i didn't know it was that easy it's not easy but it's worth it as always i'm more than happy to discuss some of the specifics with you if you have any questions let me know keep looking at your local market keep learning keep learning the financials keep getting comfortable with it uh, or also if you're not ready financially just think about where you are right now and when that financial comfort is if you get to that spot where you want to invest in real estate how long does it take what does it take how much per month does it take so you can save up and start but there are more options than ever to invest in real estate to start making money on real estate don't miss out on it and i'll see you on the next video